Matteo Jorgensen on the hunt again, finishing third, solo winner Eon is gear, giving Kofidis a second stage win after so many years, the second one in this 2023 Tour de France. Second place went to Mathieu Borgado. What a rip roar of a stage on site here in Beaujolais, 168 kilometers from Rouen to Bellevue on Beaujolais. And if you have time, go back and watch all of those kilometers three categorized three climbs and two categorized two climbs and right away there were attacks. Mads Pedersen went on the attack from nearly kilometer zero, then the GC guys were hitting. A lot of riders including Matteo Jorgensen had this stage circled in their road book because this was the stage that was ensured an escape would go on to fight for the victory and yeah it did, that's how Easy Gear won. Jumbo Visma, UA Team Emirates, they were even heading out the GC teams. And at one point, if you would have looked, perhaps you would have seen a Jonas Vingago slightly isolated from the UA Team Emirates team, which had the numbers up in the move. While well, I spoke to Jonas in the mix zone, he said, no, 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 that wasn't the case. I wasn't isolated. So excuse me, Jonas, if we got that wrong, if we were looking at the coverage wrong, but at times it looked to be a delicate situation for our yellow jersey race leader. Sepp Kuss was distance off the back, as too was Nielsen Palace in the polka dot jersey. That would all come back together at one point, but it was strung out and it was tense in the early hours. Walt Van Aert went on the attack. He was solo for some time. That didn't come to anything. Then his teammate Wilco Kilderman was on the attack with Matthias Skilmos, the Danish champion from Lidl Trek. And then finally, we saw the move of Jumbo Visma rider Tish Benoit going free with Dylan Toons and those riders would help form the escape that would survive to the finish line. And in that move, it was Matthew Vanderpool who was also on the attack earlier in the day. Andre Amador, who was in the attack the other day, the Costa Rican rider, Tish Benoit, Thibaut Pinot, who was moving up in the GC, Guillaume Martin, teammate of Ion Izaguirre, Ruben Guerrero, teammate of Matteo Jorgensen, Dylan Toons, of course, Tobias Johannesson, and Matthew Borgado. Back in the group behind, the tension never let down. We had a crash with about 57 kilometers out. We saw Julia Ciccone, but also Canadian Mike Woods, winner of the Puy de Dome stage. He got up quickly. Ciccone took some time to get back on his bike and rejoin, or at least ride his bike to the finish. Mike Woods looks to be okay. Then, 47 kilometers to go. Matthew Vanderpool lights it up on the second last climb and goes away solo, which is incredible if you think about it. He led Jasper Philipson to his first three stage victories. Then yesterday, he, didn't, he wasn't able to do it, perhaps saving his strength, but also we heard Matthew Vanderpool was sick. So Jasper Philipson went on to win his four stage victory yesterday without the help of Matthew Vanderpool. And when I spoke to Matthew Vanderpool at the start this morning, yeah, he even sounded sick. So chapeau to Matthew Vanderpool for being able to pull off that solo hit out there. And it lasted for a little while back behind. It was Matteo Jorgensen, the American from Idaho, riding for Team Movistar on the attack with Tish Benoit, attacking out of that escape group, bridging up to Matthew Vanderpool and really being a key player in today's stage. But as Eon is a gear who hit out before the top of that last climb. He had a little bit in time over Matteo Jorgensen and Thibaut Pinot at the top. Then behind, there were others like Guillaume Martin marking the moves for his teammate Eon Izaguirre up the road, Tobias Johannesson and Matthew Borgado. Those riders would come back together. Matthew Vanderpool was distanced down the road, but Eon Izaguirre, he was free 28 kilometers or so from the top of that last climb to get to the finish here in Beaujolais. Team Kofidi pulling off another stage victory. But I want to highlight the ride of American Matteo Jorgensen because he's really rocketed to the top in these last four years with Team Movistar. Last year was his debut in the Tour de France and he placed fourth, I think, on two occasions, two fourth places. Then on the Puy de Dome stage the other day, he led for around 50 kilometers until Mike Woods caught him. He held on, finished fourth on that day as well. Today was his best ever result in the Tour de France, a third place. I spoke with Matteo Jorgensen at the finish. The other day he was happy, today he was upset. I asked him why and he said, well, the other day he did what he needed to do and he was happy with how he wrote it. Today, frankly, he was a bit upset. He was upset because he thought he could have done more. And yeah, Matteo has the potential to do so much more. And next year when he's riding with Team Jumbo Visma, a little secret that'll be announced later on, they will explore his potential and get the most out of him. But Matteo Jorgensen was really launching all the counterattacks today in the group behind Izagir up the road. 
but there was disorganization and they couldn't pull back the lone Basque rider who would go on to celebrate his second ever Tour de France win. His first one came back in 2016. But keep note of Matteo Jorgensen if you're not already doing so. Now, I also want to highlight the ride of Matthew Vanderpool because after being sick the other day, this really shows what a monster he is. To pull off a ride like that today, attacking, attacking, riding solo at one point, that really shows his depth and his class because, yeah, he was sick. You could hear it in his voice this morning. And then Walt Van Aert, another strong classics rider who's often going head to head with Matthew Vanderpool. Both of those guys are world champions in cyclocross. Walt Van Aert tried to go solo at the finish today at the bus. He didn't want to speak. Understandably, he's a bit upset, especially when you're looking at the last couple of years for him in the Tour de France and certainly last year when he was going on to stage victories. Well, this year he's been knocking on the door, but it hasn't yet worked out for him and he's getting a little upset. But the focus should really be in Jumbo Visma on getting that yellow jersey. They have the yellow jersey lead by around 17 seconds over Tade Pogacar, but they shouldn't take anything for granted. In my opinion, they should really be rallying those troops around Jonas Vingigo to make sure he backs up and defends his title from the 2022 Tour de France because UAE Team Emirates, they have Tade Pogacar, who seems to be on the up and up, gaining time in the last two summit finishes. And in the next three days, well, it's gonna be bananas because we're heading into the high mountains. We've got the Grand Colombiera, we got the stage to Morzine, and we got the stage on Sunday up to Mont Blanc, saint Greve. So buckle up, tune in. But today we're celebrating Ion Izagir, we're celebrating the ride of Matteo Jorgensen, and we're looking at the ride of Matthew Vanderpool in the 2023 Tour de France.